Section 6.3, sine, cosine, and the unit circle. This is a long set of videos, so sit down and get ready for the long haul here. The objectives here are to understand what sine and cosine are, to use sine and cosine properly to calculate lengths of distances when given angle measure in both radians and degrees, and to use sine and cosine to define a trigonometric function to model circular motion. All right. So I did want to open this up with a discussion question, and I want you to think for a moment what are some of the ways that we describe our physical location. Think about the different ways to describe location, what do these ways have in common, what is different, jot down a few of these ideas. Um, hopefully, and hopefully you're thinking about this while I'm writing this down, you came up with ideas such as we have latitude and longitude. which are using coordinates. We actually have the Cartesian plane in math, which also uses coordinates. Um, I've heard before the Dewey Decimal System for locating books in the library. Uh, some games have ways to locate things, such as Battleship. Usually maps have some kind of grid. What most of these methods have in common is that physication is determined first by horizontal position, say six, and then by a vertical position, perhaps three. So that every coordinate gives a unique point which can be discovered going horizontally a certain distance and going vertically a certain distance. This leads to what we're going to talk about with our conceptual understanding of sine and cosine. Let's first look at a circle. All right, we already know our circle has a center, and it's going to have some kind of radius. And every point on the circle is going to be the same distance away from the center, a radius length away. So how do we determine or how do we describe if we're, say, at this blue dot? How can we tell someone that that's where we are, we are on the circle? And the answer is to use a coordinate. So we set our center to be 0, 0. And we're going to say that we're a certain distance to the right and a certain distance up. And that's going to create a right angle, and we do have a hypotenuse that's the same length as our radius. Well, guess what? This vertical distance and let's change the color here. The vertical distance would help if I could write a little better. There we go. The vertical distance is actually your sine value. And then the horizontal distance is your cosine value. So no matter where we are in the circle, the distance we are above or below this center line is sine, and the distance to the right or the left is cosine. Now the trick is that both of these are in terms of radii, or radius lengths. Meaning that, say we were, we'll keep that there. Let's look at another, a quick example. 